Special investigation bingo game. Did you have a square marked Alex Vanderswan? Alex Vanderswan. Alex Vanderswan? Alex Vanderswan. Alex Vanderswan was really not on anybody's bingo card. Alex Vanderswan, who nobody had ever heard of before today. Alex Vanderswan. <laughs> He came, he saw, he checked out his hair. By the way, what a nice picture that is. Look at that. I'd love to watch that guy speak. Oh, God. That's so awesome. I try like hell to hide that ball spot, folks. I work harder. Doesn't look bad. Hey, we're hanging in. We're hanging in. It's amazing. That's our president. <laughs> How did this happen? How did this happen? All right. But he turned insults about his golden mane into a golden moment. And you know, it's hard to rip him on his locks when he's just better at it than you are. <laughs> so on Friday at CPAC, President Trump touched on pretty much everything. Talking like your rich uncle who simply doesn't give two or three <laughs> You be the judge of how many <laughs> he doesn't give. My favorite part, when he explained plainly why people do lousy in midterm elections. What happens is you fight so hard to win the presidency. You fight, fight, fight. And now only two years. That's a very short period. And by the time you start campaigning, it's a year. And now you got to go and fight again. But you just won. So nobody has that same drive that they had. So you end up not doing that well because the other side is going, cra they're crazed. And by the way, they're crazed anyway. These people, they are really crazed. Try to remember, has anyone ever done that before? It's the best election advice I've ever heard. And of course, any Trump speech wouldn't be complete without an honest self-assessment. My administration I think, has had the most successful first year in the history of the presidency. I really believe that. I really believe it. You know, always point to a guy in the audience after you make a good point. People love it. About as much as they love digs at the media, and of course, you know who. We have a very crooked media. We had a crooked candidate, too, by the way. But we have, we have a very, we have a very, very crooked media. All right. And just to make sure no one felt left out, Trump made sure to call out walking driftwood sculpture, John Kerry. If somebody said death to America while well, I'm signing an agreement and I'm president, I immediately say, what's going on here, folks? I'm not signing. What's going on? They just kept going. Kerry. Kerry may be the worst negotiator I've ever seen. <laughs> the worst. Everything's the worst. Or a disgrace. Finally, if there was any doubt about the border wall, he got right to the point. Don't worry, you're getting the wall. Don't worry, okay? A... You know, if Donald Trump is Van Halen, then build the wall is his hot for teacher. <laughs> But you got to ask yourself, why is this so entertaining and so refreshing? I mean, sure, it's totally populist, filled with red meat galore, with obvious go-to applause lines for a ready-made audience. But there's more to it than that. Trump's good at taking slings and arrows directed at him and then turning them into armor. And in a world where the left is heading straight into the humorless void of identity politics, where all jokes go to die, we have a guy charging in the opposite direction into the other world known as fun. <laughs> He's also an historical first. I call it an entertainer in chief. He wanted two things in life, to host a TV show where he could talk about stuff, but also be president. <laughs> At 71, he managed to combine both. <laughs> no wonder he's having a ball. And that's my final point. He is having a ball. And maybe so should you. For now.
Let's welcome tonight's guest. He is so tough, a bed of nails sleeps on him. <laughs> Retired U.S. Army Lieutenant Colonel and Fox News contributor Alan West. She is so bright, lighthouses call her for advice. The Federalist staff writer, Bree Payton. And there aren't enough tissues for all of her issues. National Review reporter, Kat Tim. It's okay. Interesting fact, he doesn't own a ladder. <laughs> Former bodyguard and my massive sidekick, Tyrus. <laughs> Colonel West, what impressed you most about his CPAC speech? Any highlights for you? Well, yeah, I think the, the most important thing, if you've ever read uh, Saul Alinsky's Rules for Radicals, and he always talks about how you can use ridicule against your political opposition. And, and you're absolutely right. This guy, no matter what you throw at him, he takes it and, and turns it back against them. And they're t completely frustrated as if there is nothing that we can say or do that gets under this guy's skin. Mm -hmm. And so when you look at a, a person that understands entertainment, he is his best public relations firm, and I think he just had fun at CPAC. He went out there, he told his yes, story. Yes, yes, he did have fun. But, you know, uh, Bree, Colonel West makes a good point about, like, it's always, the, it's always the left that's kind of, like, able to insult. And finally, we have, like, you know, triumph the insult dog as president. Yeah, <laughs> you're exactly right. I think my favorite, speaking of insults, I think my favorite part was when he called the Democrats out for hating freedom. And I think <laughs> if there's anything we could learn from the last eight years, it's that they do that. Or as soon as they get in power, I mean, right now in San Francisco, um, which is a super leftist commie city. I mean, yeah. I'm from California. I know how it is over there, right? Right. And they're going after a crisis pregnancy center because their website ends up on Google at mm -hmm. times when they don't like. Right. Okay. So this is the kind of thing we're dealing with. Yeah. And he's calling them out for that. And, you know, I think if the shoe fits, wear it. It's mm -hmm. obvious that Democrats want us all to be miserable. And he's just speaking the truth. Yeah, he doesn't. He just doesn't care, Cat, about any. He even said before he did that snake poem that I know that you love, that he says, I know people, I know people aren't going to like this, but I don't care if they don't like it. <laughs> I don't, you know, I, I believe that he is very, he could be very sloppy when some things he says. But if he's bigger, if he's right on a big thing, we forgive him for kind of the sloppy language at times. First of all, let me let you on a little inside joke. Greg said, know that I love because I don't love the poem. <laughs> um, but I already know that he doesn't care what I think. So. Yes. I, I, I painted you into a corner. Right. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. This was just a classic Trump to the base speech. Right. It had everything. It had the wall. He, I, he managed to throw in a crooked Hillary there, pretty much. Yes, that was um, a... That took some talent. Yes. Talking about immigration, talking about the economy, and then, of course, doing the thing where he stops and leans to the side and waits for people to clap for him. Yeah. Which I don't... See, I did it, and it didn't work for me. So no. I have to... <laughs> He's able to do it. Sometimes he just starts clapping for himself, too. I'm doing it right now, and it doesn't work for me either. So he's really good at getting applause, and that's one thing that I really envy about him, whether or not he has a bald spot. Yes. You know, Tyrus, uh, I bet he wishes he could do that every week. He seems to enjoy it be his thing. Well, he does do that every week. <laughs> yeah. And that, I think that's the part that... The super left and CN, the CNN building has got to have a late night meetings. Like, what do we got? <laughs> <laughs> he cheats on his wife. He's a Russian spy. <laughs> and none of that works. He doesn't care. <laughs> he, he eats at McDonald's and he doesn't care. <laughs> Did he eat a baby? Can we keep eating <laughs> yeah. a baby? And we probably would say it was the best baby I ever had. And those of us who haven't had a baby should really try it. I, I don't know how, what to make of that. I will say this. What you're talking about, the fact that he doesn't care, it makes it harder for uh, comedians to even deal with him because it doesn't it doesn't bother it might have bothered him before you know you've been in that I've been in that relationship where she don't care anymore and you try to say <laughs> things to hurt her feelings and she don't care that hurt when you said like when she gets home and tell her you always late you're responsible and she mm -hmm. <laughs> but I try to now it hurts me because yeah. it's it devalues my fight. Yeah, see? Okay. Yeah. <laughs> you gotta throw it back on it. Okay. 
Well, he is the first entertainer in chief. It's an interesting thing, you know, that the, the ability to combine two life wishes into one thing is pretty amazing. Well, yeah. the, the interesting thing is that, you know, you have normally had the typical Republican president or whatever that comes out and talks about all these policy things. The debt sucks. Yeah. Deficits suck. And everyone just said, I, I, I can't connect. I don't get it. But this guy, he brings people in because they find it funny. They find yeah. it engaging. And you know what? They're getting money in their pockets, too, yeah. on top of that. Yeah. This is a win-win situation. That's and true. then you trot out someone like a Keith Ellison or mm -hmm. Nancy Pelosi or all those CNN folks, and they just, they're Debbie Downers, man. Yeah. I mean, that's what you see. Yeah. All right. And that's an up point to Keith. Still to come, we'll discuss the president's meeting with those affected by gun violence. And later, Nancy Pelosi's got some border wall alternatives. Plus, the CNN reporter confronts an elderly Trump supporter. It's a cornucopia of dumb ideas. <laughs> On Wednesday afternoon, we saw real progress in the gun debate. The president's meeting didn't feature just emotional testimony, but rational solutions. In Israel, you have to be 27 years old to have a gun. You're only allowed one. They tax the guns. Uh, you have to go through significant training. When somebody shows signs of hurting themselves or someone else, you can um, take their, their gun away from them. They won't get past point one. They go through the metal detector. Their bag go through the machine. So it was pure civil discourse. Then came CNN's town hall, which wasn't. Can you tell me right now that you will not accept a single donation from the NRA? In the future? Your comments this week and those of our president have been pathetically weak. But I want to explain to you why you would not. And I want to be allowed the opportunity, which is why I am here. Let me answer the question. Let me answer the question. You can shout me down when I'm finished, but let me answer Emma's question. That's a huge... Wait a second. Wait a second. You guys, if I can't hear her statement, I can't come up with a rebuttal. I don't know, CNN, if booing and heckling helps create dialogue, why not hand out tomatoes, too? <laughs> but you got what you wanted, a Jerry Springer spectacle that widens the divide, undoing any goodwill made earlier that day. Fact is, if you wanted more people to buy guns, that did the trick. By, by treating the guests like guilty parties, suddenly a law-abiding person is a killer by association. It's a pattern. The media grabs a hot issue and inflames it. Remember their police shootings narrative? The media slathered that issue with emotion and half-truths, creating a recursive rage spiral. The result, the police ended up pulling back, and crime jumped in some cities. And that somehow shocked the media. Meanwhile, witness the practical solutions coming from the White House and this house. Last week, we mentioned the civil tag, a database for madmen based on police, teachers, and students' testimony. If you're in that database, no guns. That's it. And clearly, some very important people heard what Tyra said as well. When 9-11 happened, the planes hit the towers, airports were changed forever. Mm -hmm. We got the TSA. Our children are getting hit. It's time to change the schools forever. Mm -hmm. And there is a population out there, and I checked, only had, they didn't have the new stats out, but last year's stats was 4.3% unemployment for returning veterans to this country. That's 435,000 trained men who have eyes and ears. We need to have them at the schools. Mm -hmm. TSA needs to be at the school. One way in, one way out. Boy, do we need that. And we need it because we've learned of three failures so far. The FBI not responding to tips. The police not acting after many, many visits. Officers not pursuing the madmen. No wonder Sheriff Israel deflected the wrath onto Dana Lash. I understand you're standing up for the NRA, and I understand that's what you're supposed to do. But you just told this group of people that you are standing up for them. You're not standing up for them until you say, I want less weapons. Amazing. But it was those errors that led to Trump's bluntness. The teacher would have shot the hell out of him before he knew what happened. <laughs> 
Now, the media is going to smirk at that, but that's what you get after a paralysis of analysis. Rational solutions exist, but the media, clouded by their own bias, acts like they've never heard of them before. Instead, they poke fun of Trump's meeting notes. So in the end, compare Trump's meeting and CNN's show trial. Who emerges as the more objective name in news? Maybe CNN should ha have had more notes. <laughs> Colonel West, you're, you're, obvi you're obviously a, a veteran. You were a congressman in Parkland's district. You are also on the NRA board, so you are kind of like in the thick of this thing. And, and I own three AR-15s. Yeah, that's why I don't come by your house. <laughs> um, what do you make of this compare? I mean, I felt that the White House meeting was cathartic, mm -hmm. and then I got completely depressed and crushed when I watched the CNN event. When I look at that CNN debate and I see Sheriff Israel, he's in a lot of trouble mm -hmm. because now we have come to find out that the sheriff's deputy that was there to protect that student. Understand there was one school resource officer for a school of 3,000. Mm -hmm. His whole duty is to protect those students, and he failed in his job. Mm -hmm. Now, what's the criteria to have a school resource officer in the Broward Sheriff's Office? Furthermore, I guarantee you that Sheriff Israel knew about that surveillance video mm -hmm. last week, Wednesday. And why are we just now finding out about it? What drives me crazy is that I think Sheriff Israel knew a lot of things at that town hall, and that's why he turned it on oh, to Dana Lash, because there was also, I believe, that officer at the school also had been tipped off about, the, about yes. this part, person before, which blows my mind. Uh, Tyrus, you, I, I swear after you made that suggestion last week, that I heard of that suggestion almost verbatim all over the place about the night about after 9-11. Please send your checks to Tyrant. No, um, <laughs> look, I, that's just a common sense thing. I, I, I would have hoped there would have been more people like, yeah, you know what? But here's the thing. If you don't want solutions, you want arguments. And that's pretty much what we learned this week. Mm -hmm. The mistake, like, here's a perfect, like the gun thing. And, and after the, what we have, people are attacking NRA, like it's a nine foot monster. Yeah. It's the people of the United States, and it's American citizens who are the NRA, not the people on the stage that are getting attacked that night. So you're attacking your own people. So we need to figure that out really quick, that that's not, not the issue, yelling and screaming about guns. I am not a member of the NRA, but I will be joining, sir, ASAP, because that's, I would like to be a part of that, of that argument. But a motivated individual who decides he's going to kill someone or a group of people or a school or rape a woman, that motivated individual is going to accomplish degree, however. Unmotivated individual, in this case, is the deputy who had at least two firearms and a shotgun in his car. None of those guns saved anybody because he was not motivated. Those guns could not float <laughs> across the school and stop this person because the man who had those guns was unmotivated, lazy, and afraid. Mm. When you're a motivated human being in this country, you can do terrible things. If that's your mindset, the only way we can stop that is by having teams of trained, motivated individuals to intercept you. Period. There's no other way about it. And, and yeah. let me, you know, most people don't know who Stephen Williford is. Mm -hmm. Stephen Williford was the former NRA trained weapons instructor who returned fire against right. the assailant at Sutherland Springs. Mm -hmm. And he did it with an AR-15. But it's so interesting to me that you never hear that type of story, right. that the failure of the United States Air Force and also the federal authorities that did not supply the information of that assailant who, number one, had a disarmable discharge from the Air, Air Force, right. and number two, was convict, convicted of a domestic violence. Right. And the person that saved that carnage was someone with an AR-15 trained through the NRA. Right. You know, and it's, it, that's why I feel so strongly about it, this civil database, but I, I want to ask... Cat, as a libertarian, how do you, would you budge a little on gun rights? No. You, no, that's what I thought. Mm -mm, not yeah. at all. And watching that town hall, I can't help but think so many people are going to make the mistake of watching that and thinking that the audience there represents America. Mm -hmm. It does not represent America. There are still very many people in America who understand the Constitution, and they understand that the Second Amendment exists not just so we can protect ourselves, but also for protection of our liberty against a tyrannical government. And you can't forget that. And you can't let the left bully you or shame you or shout out, you're a murderer. At Dana and make you feel bad and let us give that up because it's too important to give that up. Yeah.
Last word, Bree. What are your thoughts? So my boss actually interviewed Dana about her experience, and she said that it was set up kind of like a WWE SmackDown. She had to yeah. walk Ooh. in between. <laughs> <laughs> this is her. This is her account of what happened. Yeah. So they had kind of like theme music for each of the panelists that were coming out, and they had to walk out like between the audience. Oh, wow. And sit out on stage, and it was like this whole thing. And you could read her full remarks over at thefederalist.com and listen to, you know, what she had to say about that. Um, but, you know, just the way that they set it up, it was very apparent that CNN was not about real solutions, as Tyra said. It was about creating this big, you know, smackdown on TV for ratings. Yeah, and you know, it was the least attractive thing besides a mob is instigating a mob when you know it's because it's so easy to do and it was like the, you know the CN cnn it it cemented a divide that meant that meant it to be defrosted and i saw the defrost happening at that at that trump at that trump event and then i saw it being cemented again and it just it, people are general i believe people are inherently good until they're in a mob and then when they're when that mob gets going anything can happen and that's what scares me we got to move on but uh all right <laughs> producer goes please move on <laughs> nancy pelosi's awesome idea for securing the border just kidding it won't secure anything but we're going to talk about it anyway it's going to be great <laughs>
Now, if she were Republican, no, if she were Republican, if she were Republican, me. she would be branded a racist for linking Mexico to lawn care because she probably sees Mexico as cheap labor for her Californian estate. Oh. Good luck with that question. Oh, no, I got this. <laughs> I know, I ain't no damn diva. I can handle this stuff. <laughs> First of all, I think, has she ever been to the border? Through California and Arizona, it's a desert, homie. There's not a whole lot of grass. It's hot as hell, and yeah. it's not too hard to see somebody crawling on the hot ass ground. So that's one. And two, yeah, if uh, I'm trying to think who I can put this on, somebody I like. If John McCain, who I love to yeah. death, came out and said, Let's mow lawns. Uh, yes. Mm. That'd be it for me. That'd be it. No, it would be. That would be it. He would. They would be like, he's telling them cut grass. Yeah, no, that's exact. You know, and it's yeah. she has. But forget all that. I, I said it time and time again. Can you put a close up? You need <laughs> Democratic Party. Stop talking. <laughs> Deplorables. Crumbs. <laughs> Lawn mowing. <laughs> He's right. This is not a good. This is not a good look for the Democrats to have an out of an out of touch millionaire elitist. Because the weird thing about Trump is that he's a billionaire, but he's not out of touch. No, he's not. And how do I follow that? <laughs> but 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 I don't want her to shut up. Yeah. I, want, I want Nancy Pelosi to continue to talk because she is making all the commercial advertisements for September and October yes. and into November for for the midterm election. <laughs> She's a gift that keeps giving. Yeah. All right. And a lovely lady. I think a really lovely lady. I always like to add something positive to make people feel nice good. Hair. Nice hair. Nice <laughs> hair. All right. Up next, a CNN reporter advances the Russia collusion story by ambushing an elderly Trump supporter. Now that's journalism. <laughs> Oh, not again, CNN. <laughs> so we know from that Mueller indictment that some pro and anti-Trump rallies were organized by the Russians and that Americans unwittingly participated, meaning they went, but they didn't know Russians were behind the events. We know this. Again, that's according to the federal indictment. So in an act re reminiscent of a certain 1950s Senate investigation, watch as the CNN reporter shows up at a Trump supporter's house and hounds her for promoting an event on Facebook that turns out was put on by the Russians. We were not Russians. I don't go with the Russians. That on, group was Russians. I have nothing to do with the Russians. The well, books, apparently you the, did. No. Maybe you didn't know it, but oh, you please. did. With what's, those what's people that the... were with me were all Trump supporters. Very, very much so. And okay. all apparently following the direction of groups that were associated with Russians who were BS. actually infiltrated. BS. BS. And please, please report that. I don't believe that. That's I know all the people that were with me, okay? They were at my meetings. They're all Trump supporters, okay? Mm -hmm. But did you realize that you guys were in communication electronically with, with Russians? Me. Oh, my. What an <laughs> Hey, bro, McCarthy, take it down a notch. Anyway, dude, your network CNN breathlessly covered the anti-Trump rallies that were held after the 2016 election. And guess who organized them? It wasn't Menudo. So instead of, <laughs> instead of pointing fingers at the Russians who did all this, we're pointing fingers at each other, which is exactly what the Russians want. I just wish Russia would spend less time in our business and more time keeping their tanks upright. <laughs> I'm not too worried about the Russians. Colonel, Colonel West, <laughs> uh, shouldn't CNN, like, need to go on, like, you know when you get too mm -hmm. involved in work, you need to go take a, what do you call a sabbatical? Yeah. Shouldn't the entire network take a sabbatical, go on a carnival cruise? Uh, yeah. <laughs> One of those carnival cruises where the engine, you know, 
goes kaput, and, and they're just stuck out at sea. And we should not send any resources or anything to get them back in. Just leave them out there. You know, it's so interesting to me listening to this because the person that organizes these women's marches mm -hmm. by the name of Linda Sarsour. Of course. Linda Sarsour called for a jihad against the White House. Right. But nothing is said about that. Or the fact that the only people that have done any collusion, any ties with the Russians, Christopher Steele, Fusion GPS, uh, Bruce Orr, uh, Hillary Clinton's campaign, and the DNC. But yet they want to go and harass some lady out there. It's incredible. Okay, Kat, I know this. You, you hate this guy. Well, you don't yeah. know him. Uh, uh, maybe you'd get to know him and you might like him. <laughs> <laughs> I'm thinking a new show called Ambush with CNN. They just show up at a citizen's house and they chastise them on recycling and no, a non-electric car and maybe it has a Trump bumper sticker. Right. Leave the little old lady trying to use the Internet alone. Earlier that day, she probably got all excited because she had a pop up on her computer telling her she wanted a free cruise to Aruba. You know, she probably actually reprised those emails like, oh, honey, I have a rich relative in West Africa. He said he's going to send me a million dollars. All I have to do is put in all my checking information. She's very old and very nice, and at least she knows how to use the Internet, which a lot of grandmas don't. Give her a break. Leave her alone. All right. <laughs> Bree, um, again, I think this could be a good TV show. Brian Stelter, who is the nation's hall monitor, could host it. We go now. We go now to, I don't know, Allentown, Pennsylvania, where we believe somebody is watching porn. <laughs> you know, I mean, usually the things that bother you most and other people are things that are problems with yourself. Yes. And in this case, this is, ex so as you pointed out earlier, CNN was the one that was pushing the, you know, Russia fake news, yeah. soul mob stuff that they wanted to do. And then they find this one lady who is like, did the same thing that they did to a way lesser degree and yes. they're going wild and chasing after her. Yeah. You know, and I think honestly, CNN is totally fine with licking Putin's boots because I agree with you mm -hmm. that this is what Russia wants. Russia wants yeah. us to question our electoral system mm -hmm. and question one another and go after one another like that. And I think that they're completely happy to lick Putin's boots if it means that they get to throw a cheap shot at Trump supporters. Yeah, definitely. All right, Tyrus, last word to you. I wish. <laughs> He would have came to my door. <laughs> I just, so let me see if I got this straight. This breaking news was to her and her five friends yes. who were playing cribbage and decided to go online and fill out a survey saying that they supported the president, uh, candidate Trump at the time. Yeah. That That's your story. Yeah. Does it really matter where it came from? Yeah. They were... Go call Facebook. How could you let this happen? <laughs> These women are playing cribbage or canasta, whatever they do, Brand. and you allowed Russians to send information to the community. Go after Facebook. Yeah. Go after Google. Don't after the people that were, they saw information that they supported and that they believed in and it was provided because Russia was on everybody's team. Yeah. That was the thing. Everybody's team. They were yeah. sending all kinds of stuff out. So he probably belonged to something. Probably that online date nap he was on before he got there. <laughs> Was probably by them. So he ain't so clean either. Yeah. I guarantee. Let's check your computer history, bro. Yeah. <laughs> Bet there'd be some breaking news in there. Good point. Also, it is, would be funny just to film people showing up at your house, Cyrus. <laughs> I would like that show. I mean, I'm going to welcome you in. Come on in. Come on in. Have a seat. Yes. Uh, sign here. Sign here. Thank you so much. All right. Head or gut. <laughs> Up next, don't miss our Winter Olympics roundup. You snooze, you luge. <laughs>